So, uh, I'm Sergey. I'm CTO of uh, InnoHub, and uh, I'm also a PhD. And uh, I, we are working in InnoHub in different interesting directions, starting with like AI branch, blockchain branch, cybersecurity branch. And often when we talk to people, like in business, uh, they usually do not understand about uh, what AI is and what is capable and what is not. And when we are making some like uh, our products, sometimes we get excited and we are yet like very interesting inside what is possible and what is not. And uh, today as a part of our my speech, I would like to tell about one of our products, one of our like technologies, not just quite not, not a product yet. Uh, and which was like my PhD also, and which I'm very excited about. And uh, also, I hope you will be very interested to within and to know something new about this. So, as the uh, topic of today's speech is uh, uh, AI that unveils internal human states from web camera. So, uh, the idea is uh, that uh, nowadays we have plenty of different cameras in our smartphones, in our tablets. We face with them at work, we face at them like watching smart TV at home, like looking every time at our mobile phones, like CCTV cameras um, and etc. So uh, actually I started my career working with uh, uh, like uh, face recognition and face detection methods and techniques and uh, is okay. Yeah. Okay, and uh, it was kind of fascinating what I can do at that time, but it was like a decade ago and uh, for that decade actually not very much changed. So we have the same uh, like methods uh, that detect faces, that uh, make some analytics emotional about uh, whether we have eyebrow raised or we have like our lips tightened, etc. So there are a lot of like production ready technology that allows us to understand uh, like what is going on with the person, uh, analyzing this video streams, is it happy or it's not happy, but uh, taking into account that this person expresses emotions in like normal way. Um, but most of the time, as we know, like our faces do not like express any emotions. So we are like a calm face, neutral expression, and we cannot actually tell much about what this person is thinking or whether it's excited or whether it's like maybe stressed out or something like this. And uh, actually there is very interesting research about like children's uh, lines. So the researcher tried to understand how many percent, what percent of the uh, parents can figure out if their ch child is lying or not to them. And it figure out, they figure out that it was like completely random. So parents cannot tell about their children even. Uh, they do not know their children in this case. And uh, taking, uh, so I'm the first one that really allows like science fiction. And uh, I love the developers of these movies and uh, one of these films was like Transcendence. I think some of you have seen it before. It was like 2014 and the one, one very interesting thing of this movie is that... Am I sharing the screen? Um, yeah, it was on a second ago. Yeah. You want to try it again? Uh, so is it still? Is it sharing? I can see you, uh, but if you can try sharing your screen again, maybe it will work. Oh, I see. Okay, then one moment. Because I was thinking that I'm sharing the presentation. <laughs> it was it was on presentation. Uh, Do you see it, it now? Working. Uh, I don't. You don't. Okay. Let's see if I was able to do it. And I can share my screen, but I don't have anything fascinating to say as much as you do. So. <laughs> okay. 
this is sharing now. Okay. As the guys are telling us that they do not see the presentation. <laughs> Uh, nice, it's coming now. Perfect. Okay. We can see your whole screen, but we you can switch the presentation. I will be working. Okay. Nice. Uh, yes. Yeah, this. Oh no. Yes. Okay. Maybe a couple yeah. slides more. Uh, you see this? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that was I was talking about like standard faces that when we do not reveal any emotions that. Standard methods cannot tell anything about our face because they do not see any clues. And uh, what I'm actually was fascinated about is like the transcendence movie uh, and the idea that was behind this movie when their strong AI was able to figure out figure out a lot of parameters about the main heroine in this movie, like stress levels, uh, her thoughts maybe, like uh, different. Uh, uh, cortisol, like adrenaline, or adrenaline, a lot of parameters. And when I was looking at this at uh, 2014, I was thinking, oh, it might be a fantasy, it's not possible. It's, it's pretty cool still. And uh, then actually, I came across an interesting uh, work about uh, like uh, that our uh, blood uh, has different spectral characteristics uh, during each heartbeat. And when it's oxygenated, uh, it gets a little bit reddish. And when it get, like, uh, absorbs uh, carbon dioxide, it gets a little bit bluish. So there is some slight change. And I came across a work that was working about magnification of this change on this uh, human face from video streams. And they managed to do a very impressive job on, like, uh, these very expensive cameras uh, they managed to uh, magnify like, for 120 times the screen, uh, the, the face color, the tint, the slight change of the tint during the heartbeat. And they managed to uh, find this pattern uh, where during each heartbeat you get a like, little bit reddish face and then it goes a little bit uh, greenish or something like this. And uh, I thought, well, they have like very expensive camera. I don't have one. And it was like beginning of my PhD. And I decided why not to try to see what can, can be done with this. And I have spent almost like a year trying to get it working with like uh, normal web cameras. We had a lot of different interesting issues with uh, noises, etc. It was quite a complicated mathematical problem, actually. Uh, and uh, there. In the end, we've got this effect from normal cameras. And uh, it was like, you know, OK, we can now measure heart rate. What's about it? It's not, nothing special, but still we can measure it from web camera, like remotely, without any contact sensors, etc. And then I have come across a lot of interesting uh, works from uh, medical sphere, where uh, doctors and biologists were trying to figure out uh, how our heart affects on uh, different uh, systems in the body and how it listens to different systems on the body. And it appeared that a uh, very interesting fact happens. So we have uh, our heart is a sort of sensor. So uh, we usually like, you know, I'll go to doctor and measure uh, 60 heart rate beats per minute. And we think that it's constant rate. Actually, it's not. So during each heartbeat interval, it's uh, quite unique. So its distance changes a little bit in time. And uh, with this change, you might make like the third graph, like cardio intervalograms. It's like differences between each heartbeat. And uh, by the variation of this uh, cardio intervalogram, you may deduce what is really happening with your body. So the idea of the medics behind this was that they were trying to give some sort of drugs. It was like 10 decades of discoveries. So they uh, measured this very variance of this series data uh, before they gave a human a drug. So they made the statistics. They, they tried to give the drug, measure it, and the drug was causing, for example, stress. And they find out interesting patterns. Uh, so there's series became a little bit more chaotic, for example. And on another experiment, they gave, for example, drugs that makes them feel uh, 
more like less stressed and they have very nice sinusoidal uh, patterns there. So the human became more relaxed and uh, like more uh, better, better feeling. And uh, actually we can make a plot of all the states of the human, of this uh, heartbeats, making uh, like uh, on the right axis, uh, we have like uh, cortisol uh, effect and on the vertical axis, we have like adrenaline effect, for example, and acetylcholine. And uh, the compound of these chemicals that our body produces, uh, uh, like it affects our heart rate, how chaotic it is. So if it's like very fast rate and it's like uh, uh, more uh, positive emotions, so uh, we are like passion motivated, for example, and enthusiastic. So we have all these reasons that uh, go fast and they are like almost have no chaos. And on the other way, if you're in the, like catabolic states, uh, we have like a lot of cortisol, it's a dilcholine, and uh, we have very slow rates and they are very chaotic. And uh, actually, uh, with our solution, it is possible to measure uh, like what is going on with the person. Uh, so our technology allows to figure out each an exact heartbeat, uh, and it can analyze and these differences between heartbeats, like variation. It is possible to uh, figure out where exactly on this plot of this human is. So the idea how it works. So we have like our face. We have uh, uh, the camera, just normal web camera, like smartphone camera, or camera in your uh, laptop, uh, and uh, like uh, it grabs the video stream, it analyzes via our methods. So it's like a lot of different neural networks going on, like uh, a skin detector, face detector, like a lot of mass for signal processing, and uh, we've got this signal of your heartbeats and analyzing this uh, intervals in like 15 seconds, we are able to retrieve uh, balls, we are able to retrieve in 30 seconds respiration rate because we have a very interesting mechanism in our body when we breathe in. Uh, so our uh, heart starts contracting faster when we exhale, it goes like slower and we can also like, control a little bit our heart. But if we are stressed out, we have a little level of cortisol, we are, like have very fast heart rate, so it is possible to figure out even when the person sits and has like absolutely calm face without expressing any emotions. Um, so another stage is like obtaining stress and uh, brain activity calculation because our brain also uh, can uh, influence the heart and can show like uh, in changing patterns. And it was actually a very interesting way to get to this point when we have this technology. So we had a lot of medical and clinical experiments with doctors having like halter um, to figure out how exactly our system works. So uh, having like medically proved equipment to pinpoint each and exact heartbeat and to map it to our series that our technology gives. And for now, we have this technology so it's like it can be uh, made better. So we are working on it. And for now, we have this set of parameters like both intervals, uh, like heart rate and breathing rate, so stress level, productivity index, brain activity index. And still we are working on like blood pressure, oxygenation, saturation. So just having, imagine just having like just video stream of your face, it is possible to extract such huge range of uh, biological parameters and just my seat and do nothing. And it's, I think it's amazing. Uh, so what about possible applications? Uh, we were starting like as an academy working on PhD in Kyiv Polytechnical Institute. Uh, so we had a lot of students and uh, our professors really wanted to figure out what is going on during exams. And we had like initial hypothesis that uh, like, uh, uh, students who have bad marks will be stressed more and students who know and who are like having A marks, they will know uh, the material better and the initial hypothesis would be that the students with a good knowledge will be stressed less. But we got like ex exactly the opposite picture. So 
uh, here on the left we have like a boy who had, I guess, uh, C or D uh, during his exam. So he was really not caring about his mark. He just came to pass the exam and leave. And he was like calm during the exam and we had like stress, his stress like from 20 to 35. So it's not, was, it wasn't very high. And his heart rate, our system showed, was in the range of 70 beats per minute up to 90 beats per minute. So we cannot say that he was really stressed out. And uh, also there was a girl. She was very calm. She like wrote excellent everything during the exam. She, so when the, our lecturer came to the audience, he said that, well, she is super calm. She should not be worried at all but our system show completely opposite. So she had stress level like 120 and her heart rate was going from the lowest 110 up to 140. So she was super stressed. She was uh, very afraid to get not A of her mark. And uh, after the end of this exam, when we talked to uh, the professor, so she was very surprised because uh, when you see the audience like, a lot of students, like every student sitting in front of you and you're given the material, uh, like giving your lecture, you have no idea uh, what was the perception of this audience. Do they understand that, uh, the way, you, the, the thing you're talking or they are just like, oh, let him talk and we will read some somewhere later all this material. So this engagement is often usually lost and our technology revealed that some students uh, got excited, some students got stressed. So it's very interesting way to figure out, like to get a feedback loop and to improve some part of studies. Another case is like transportation. So we had a lot of experiments with drivers, like uh, machinists, uh, like uh, car drivers for long distances. Uh, the, people who were trying heavy vehicles and also like, like real pictures from the system showing their stress levels because it really showed very nice correlations that uh, people get tired out by the evening or after the whole working shift and sometimes like changing their schedule might improve their internal feeling and like productivity in general. Uh, also, there was a very nice set of experiments uh, for uh, stress tracking for office workers uh, because you can figure out when the brain is working and when it's like resting and to figure out like the best uh, schedule also for these office workers. So it was like our experimental setup where uh, we were screening uh, this woman so here's in the middle of the screen, there is a web camera and uh, like almost half a meter away from this camera and we were getting pretty nice readings from it. Uh, yeah, so this is like the screens from real system. You can see heart, heart rate coming and uh, also on the top, the plot shows the real heartbeats so for me, it's like in real time. I hope you see also in real time. Uh, yeah. And me. And another applications include a lot of from medicine, for example, in chair, uh, child care units where you have newborn babies. It's uh, very uh, unlikely that you would like to put any sensors, contact sensors on them because it might hurt the baby. And it's a very nice case where you can put this contactless uh, camera that just the, sees the heart rate, the heart beats, and translate it into the other systems. Uh, if we talk about like medicine market in general, so it's going to be a very a huge investment, almost like half a trillion dollars up to uh, 2025. And it includes a lot of uh, even personal uh, issues, uh, like not only the um, medicine at all, but also how people start to care about uh, their health. 
So one of interesting topics we were looking at is like predictive, preventive, personalized and participatory medicines like P4 medicine, when uh, the main idea was that uh, currently people go to doctor when they get sick. And the idea of this type of medicine is to figure out some uh, early criteria, some early uh, signs that person might get sick and uh, to uh, try to fix it before it gets late. And taking into account our technology, it is in theory possible to uh, make like telemedicine, to put, install it on like any software, any laptops, mobile phones, like smart TVs, etc., and to monitor human states, like all those part of parameters, and to make recommendation if we see the change of uh, human uh, state, uh, we can make a recommendation. Oh, you should go there and check the doctor because there's something happening with your body, and uh, so it's not like medical. Uh, proof and state-of-the-art system. It cannot be used like that, but it can be an early uh, warning system to uh, give you alert if something might happen and then you have like information that you might visit a doctor and it might save you or something like this. So for this also there will be a lot of infrastructure. Uh, a lot of infrastructure should be developed including different machine learning, deep learning methods to analyze all these huge streams of data. Uh, and it's also like very interesting and complicated task, I would say. So uh, another product that can be also made by this, it's like smart cameras, because when we're talking about web cameras and other cameras, they are like pretty precise, but they have a lot of limitations and making like own hardware product might remove these limitations and give very interesting opportunities about quality, speed, and other things. And also, if you're uh, about the distance, so currently, if we are talking about web cameras, so they working like meter away from you, uh, up to two. And if we want like more distances and actually having a good lenses and a good camera, we had made tests and we get results like five meters, five to six, seven meters. Okay, so I guess this was like the most part of it. Uh, and if someone 